A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. From the wilderness of Sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Doris and Sharon, for reading our scripture lesson for us this morning. As we think of our theme of unshakable, we um, are aware that sometimes our journey of faith is one in which we are shaken. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks that you are God. We give you thanks that you are with us. We give you thanks that you are our hope. Draw near to us at this time that wherever we are in the journey of our lives and our journeys of faith, we will be mindful of your presence in our midst, equipping us and calling us forward and giving us new life. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation on all of our hearts will be acceptable to you, O God. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So in 2007, Nebraska State Senator Ernie Chambers filed a lawsuit against God. He accused God of, and I quote, fearsome floods, egregious earthquakes, horrendous hurricanes, terrifying tornadoes, pestil pestilential plagues, and the like. Now his lawsuit was dismissed. The presiding judge said that since God did not have a legal address, God could not be summoned to court. And so um, the lawsuit was thrown out. But this lawsuit was actually not the first nor the last of its kind. And Chambers is not the first to want to call God out for the problems of the world. Now quite a complaint could be filed if we were to hold God to account for even one day's headlines in a week of our present day. Last Thursday alone, we would have cried out about the 200th American death to COVID. We would have cried out about the failure of the Louisville grand jury to indict officers in the murder of Breonna Taylor. As, and as we cried out that the same grand jury placed more of a penalty upon the officers for the bullet holes in the walls of neighboring apartments than for the bullets that killed her. We would have cried out as we heard our president utter confusing and disturbing words about his lack of commitment to a peaceful transition of leadership if he does not win the 2020 presidential election. And frankly, each day we hear of natural disasters, hurricanes and tropical storms that are so vast this season that we're now using the Greek alphabet to name them. All right, where the heck is God? Where is the one who made us in love? Doesn't this God have the power to fix things? Why are we in this mess? See, these are questions that have been echoed for millennia, as evidenced by our scripture for today. 
the Israelites who were freed from captivity by God now find themselves wandering through the wilderness of sin. They are now finding themselves parched from thirst and afraid. Now they've been afraid before and this is not new. They were afraid as they were chased by Egyptian soldiers through the Red Sea and God delivered them. They were afraid as their bellies grumbled for food and God fed them. They were afraid again and for good reason for you can't get too far in any desert without water. And they complained as most of us would too. They complained about being thirsty and they complained about God. Where the heck was God? Why did God go through all of the trouble of freeing them from slavery? Why did God let them free just to lead them into a desert where they might die of thirst? So Moses hears their complaints and has fears of his own too. And he cries out to God with his fears and worries and on behalf of the people he's been called to lead and says, God, what am I supposed to do now? See, like Moses and the Israelites and billions before and since, we cry out to God too. God, where are you? What am I supposed to do? We have complained directly or indirectly because sometimes it feels like there is nothing else we can do but complain. Now, honestly, that's okay. Crying out to God is a form of prayer. Do it. God can take it. And we acknowledge that we know wilderness too, even if we haven't wandered for 40 years in the desert. We know the sense of being on a journey with no clear sense of what lies ahead. This is part of the human experience. We start a new job. We move across state. We have a kid. We get a call from the doctor reminding us of how vulnerable we are. And we learn that the terrain that we will soon travel is just not going to be smooth. We know what it's like to find ourselves in situations that render us utterly dependent, suddenly unable to secure our own needs with no map or rest stops to give us a sense of comfort or ease or control along the way. Wilderness. Wilderness upends our lives and greets us in hospital rooms and living rooms through cancer diagnosis or wage insecurity. Wilderness greets us in traffic stops and divorce settlements and even in empty nests. And sometimes we try to go about life as it always has been. We try to hide the struggle and refuse to let the wilderness claim us. But wilderness is a part of every human life. It's a part of our journey. It's that season in which we recognize our own vulnerability and find ourselves stripped down to the essentials. It's a season in which we learn what and who we can lean on. Our own sense of hope, the neighbor up the street who cuts our grass, or God's grace. Like the Israelites, we cry out, is the Lord among us or not? See, because we have shown up to worship a God who promised to show up for us. But where can we find God? Where is God in this ongoing pandemic illness? Where is God in the midst of political strife and turmoil? Where is God in the midst of racial injustice that continues to divide and harm? Where is God in the midst of our exhaustion, our decision fatigue, our fear, our own needs, and our hopes? I don't know about you, but I'm tired. I want to hear God say, hey, Heather, go to that rock over there and I'll be standing on it. I want for God to give me very clear directions to a point of safety where I can drink of water and find some relief. I want this not just for myself, but for others, others whose struggles are worse than mine, others who I worry about, others whose vulnerability keeps me up at night. I want for God to make God's presence known. I want for God to make headline news. I want God to remind me again and again that God has actually given me and you and all of us the tools we need to navigate the wilderness. That the staff God provided can, by God's grace, bring the needed water. 
And I want signs to remind me that God is with me and with you and everyone who's crying out for help right now. All right, family, so what do we do? I'm not gonna file a lawsuit against God. So I'm gonna turn to the text for direction. So what can we do? Well, they can cry out. We can pray. We can bend God's ear and ask for God to hear us. We can name our needs. We can name our fears. We can recognize how vulnerable we are. And we can speak that truth instead of trying to hide it. We can talk about how hard it is to try to control everything when really nothing is truly inside our control. We can be outraged and name it. We can want better for ourselves and for others and claim it. We can cry out to God and ask for God to help. But see, the story doesn't stop with our cries because then what we need to do is listen. Maybe that's the hard part because we need to listen. We need to listen for God's voice will point us onward. God's voice will offer blessing Maybe the blessing God offers will be different than the one that we're actually asking for, but it will probably be what we really need. We can listen to God letting us know where we might see God at work. We can listen to God pointing out that the tools God has given us are tools we already have at our disposal for the necessary work to get ahead. We can listen. We can listen to God drawing us into community. We can listen to the needs of those around us. We can hear God reminding us again and again that God desires wholeness. We can listen. For God says to us, just as a parent assures a child who cries out in the dark of the night, I'm here. I'm here. Friends, we are in the wilderness. It's just true. It's where we are as individuals and where we find ourselves as a world. My prayer is that we will learn what the Israelites and the mystics and even Jesus learned from their time in the wilderness, that God is here too. That over and over again, the wilderness is the stage upon which God makes God's presence known. That is in the wilderness that God offers promises for a future, a way out of no way, manna and quail and water, words to live by, a call to repent, a sense of purpose, and attending angels caring for our needs. See, the wilderness is where we find ourselves and where we find ourselves transformed by God's grace for what comes next. Friends, we are in the wilderness, but is God among us? Yes. Over and over again, God says, yes, I am here. Is God with us? Yes. As followers of the living God, we too attest that Christ who was born in a manger and died on a cross so that we might know God is with us in all of our vulnerability, is with us now, still. Sometimes this is all we have. Sometimes these are the words to which we can cling as we take each step forward into a wilderness filled with uncertainty. Sometimes this promise to be with us is all that we have that can give us assurance or offer us courage or find strength for the journey ahead. But God is with us. 
God is with you. God is with us. And even in the wilderness, for this we can say, thanks be to God. Amen.